In this video, we are concluding our NHL offseason plan series. Today, we look at the number two team from the NHL's regular season and the 2022 Stanley Cup champions, the Colorado Avalanche. What will we expect from them this offseason? We'll take a look at their plan coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, today is the conclusion of the NHL offseason plan series for 2022. Of course, we're going to have other series coming up here soon as well. Uh, over the course of the summer and the rest of the offseason into the fall, we're going to be taking a look at some prospects. We're going to be taking a look at uh, offseason moves and kind of looking at season previews into the fall. So there'll always be a series of some sort uh, likely going here on the channel over the next several months. Now, in case you're new to this series, this is the end of it, but all the other videos are put in a playlist. If you want to watch them, I'll link the playlist in the YouTube cards. Um, obviously, this is a pretty simple concept, but what we do is we recap the 21-22 regular season, take a look at the playoffs for those who made it, uh, take a look at any you know uh, personal accomplishments amongst the players, and then we also look at the salary cap space, the expiring contracts that they have to deal with uh, for either RFAs or UFAs, and then we tackle what we call what are the most burning questions facing the franchise into this offseason? So let's first recap the 21-22 season here for the Avalanche. Of course, their record was 56-19-7, 119 points, as I mentioned, second overall. Of course, we know they were the Stanley Cup champions after a long, hard-fought playoff battle. They didn't really lose too many playoff games either, which was quite an accomplishment. They scored 308 goals during the regular season for fourth best. They allowed 232 goals for ninth best. The power play was very solid at 24% for number seven in the league. And the PK was only average at 79.7% for 15th. So just in the just in the cups of being right in the middle of the NHL. Of course, we saw Kale McCarr have quite the season, collecting lots of hardware, winning his first Norris Trophy as top defenseman. Of course, he collected the Conn Smythe Trophy as playoff MVP, and of course, helping the team win the Stanley Cup. Of course, McCarr himself put up 86 points in a phenomenal regular season for him. Uh, we saw the Avalanche go through the Predators four straight games in round one. Uh, of the Stanley Cup playoffs. They went on to play the St. Louis Blues in round two where they won in six games. Uh, the Blues probably came the closest amongst the first three rounds of having any chance to win. Uh, they did give him a little bit of a scare, but the, the Avalanche came through without too much trouble. Round three, again, against the high upstart Edmonton Oilers offense, they still won four consecutive uh, games there as well. And then they beat Tampa in the final four games to two. So overall, they won 16 games, lost four. So that's a pretty phenomenal playoff run. They were never in danger. Uh, they never faced elimination once, which is quite the accomplishment and a run all the way to the Stanley Cup. So now let's take a look at the salary cap situation for the Avalanche this offseason. Now this is going to look like they have tons of cap space. It's because they do, but they also have a ton of players that need to be replaced or re-signed. Uh, the salary cap right now, with uh, ca courtesy of CapFriendly.com, indicates they have 14 contracts on the books for next year, totaling $56.8 million, which gives them 25, sorry, $0.6 eight million dollars to work with as available salary cap space so yes that is a lot of money but now we're going to go through the list of players that are on expiring deals and you'll see just how thin this is going to be spread out amongst all these players so now let's take a look at those expiring contracts your rfas are arturi lekanen and nicholas obey kubel now of course lekanen was a key piece that they picked up with the deadline from montreal the guy continues to score big goal after big goal, he scored the uh, series clincher in the conference final, sending him to the Stanley Cup. He did the same thing for Montreal the year before, um, so that seems to be big for him. And, of course, he scored one of the big goals as well uh, in the Stanley Cup final. Like, he's just a clutch player. And the fact that he's an RFA, I highly suspect they're going to do what they can to get him signed to a decent contract here. I mean, preferably more than a year. I, hopefully, I would think they'd want to get him signed longer term, but we'll see what they can fit. Here with the camp situation, Obey Kubel likely gets a qualifying offer as well. Wouldn't be shocked if they bring him back, but I don't see him getting a long-term contract, and it's not going to cost him a lot to get a, a new deal as well. The list of USA UFAs is quite extensive, starting with goalie Darcy Kemper, who, of course, they gave up a first-round pick last year to obtain his services. So I would suspect, considering they won the Cup with Kemper, uh, it wouldn't be shocking to find out that he does re-sign, but of course, you know, they're going to have a tough situation to face in front of them here. They have a lot of tough decisions to make, and it's hard to say where the money is going to be allocated. 
They already have uh, his uh, goaltending tandem partner, Pavel Francouz, uh, under contract. And they do have a lot of confidence in him as well. Wouldn't be completely shocking if Kemper does leave, though. I think I'm going to put this probably more like a 60-40 chance that he stays. But at the end of the day, it, it's just really hard to say. I know he had an eye injury as well in the playoffs. And I do wonder long-term like what his future holds. The goaltending market on the UFA list uh, across the league is a little bit thin. So uh, there's certainly going to be a good market. He might be able to get more money elsewhere. It's really hard to say. Uh, Nazem Kadri, another key UFA coming off a career season, uh, scored a huge goal for the Avalanche. So uh, that's been very interesting to see what he does. I know he's already said he'd love to stay. Um, but, of course, that's going to prove difficult. He also said that it's a business and, you know, it's his prime opportunity. He's been on a very team-friendly contract for a number of years. It's his, probably his really last time to really cash in. So I would suspect that there's a good chance he goes. Uh, you get Andre Burakovsky, Andrew Cogliano, Darren Helm, uh, Valerie Nishushkin, who apparently, according to NHL insiders, the Avalanche have let Nishushkin know that he's right at the top of their priority list to bring back. Of course, he had a career season as well. So uh, we'll see what he can command. He's just going to, you know, every time he's scoring the playoffs, you know, his value was going up. So it'll be interesting to see what he gets. You had Nico Sturm, uh, Josh Manson, Ryan Murray, and ja- Jack Johnson. I would suspect that the last three all defensemen, Likely don't return. They probably can't afford to retain their services. Uh, they have enough other guys on their contract that I would think that they're probably all going to go. Nico Sturm, I wouldn't be shocked if they signed him to a cheaper deal uh, to be their fourth line center. That's a possibility. Coglan or Helm, I could see them offering them uh, you know, cheaper short-term deals too. But we'll see. Burkowski is going to be interesting. Kadri be interesting as well. And uh, we'll see. But what are the top burning questions facing the Stanley Cup champions? Of course, they're going to have a lot of tough decisions to make to try to make this, uh, uh, you know, a, a back-to-back championship scenario like we just saw with Tampa. Of course, we've seen it with Pittsburgh a few years back. Can the Avalanche be in the same category and work on, you know, possibly building a dynasty here? I think it's possible. But, again, a lot of things have to be uh, in question here. And of course, to me, the top question now ultimately is goaltending. How do they move forward? I mean, we know Fran Suz is there. Um, will it be him and Kemper again, or will it be somebody different? Uh, there's a lot of speculation. Like I said, they could possibly have to go in a different direction just because of the fact that Kemper may have to price himself out here if he can get money elsewhere. You know there's going to be some teams that likely overpay uh, for an experienced goaltender. Now that he's won a Stanley Cup, I'm sure his value is up. But to me, I think uh, Darcy Kemper, to me, is not... He's not really an elite goaltender. He plays well with the Avalanche team because of the how strong they are in front of him. Uh, certainly the weaker spot of the of the franchise, in my opinion. No disrespect to him. He's a good goalie, but he's not an elite level goaltender. And the main reason they were able to get past Tampa was because of the team in front of him. More so, I mean, he came up big though in Game Six. I will say that, but you know his inconsistencies was. You know, one of the weaker points of the team. So it'll be interesting to see how they proceed here. But were they one with him before? I won't be shocked if he returns. Another big item on their agenda this year is a Nathan McKinnon extension. He's in the final year of his contract. At the time, I know a lot of people thought the McKinnon contract when he first signed it was a little rich. Now people are saying it's a steal, and it, it certainly is a steal. What he's given this team the last few years will be making around six million bucks. Uh, so he's going to be cashed in and up around that nine, ten million dollar mark. I have no doubt about that. So that's, that's a huge part of the puzzle here for the Avalanche for moving you know, into the future, what it's going to cost uh, on a long-term deal for McKinnon. Of course, they got my car locked up long-term. They just got Landis Cog done on a, uh, a long-term deal last offseason. So be interesting here. Ranton signed long-term too. The ability to keep this core together is just a supporting cast like most teams are running into. That's going to, you know, we see the most turnover. But the McKinnon extension is going to play a major role in what else they do here for sure. Uh, but obviously the supporting cast... And the forward group is certainly going to be huge as well. Who comes back? Like, look at all the expiring deals between Kadri, Burakovsky, Cogliano, Helm, Nashushkin, Sturm. Like, that's six regulars. That's half of your forward lineup needs a new contract. And, you you know, you have some players that weren't necessarily playing every single day that can probably move up and play a bigger role. But there's not that much there, right? So we could see some major turnover. Um, I would say that out of the $25 million, but they have to work with, you know, obviously if you get, say, Nishushkin signed, you say you sign Kumper, like you may not be able to bring back Kadri. It just depends, right? Like Kadri's 31 years old coming off a career season. I love Kadri as a player. I think he's done a, a good job at, uh, you know, taking his game to a new level and maturing and getting past all of the 
Uh, you know, obstacles he's put himself into him before getting suspended in the playoffs. It's nice to see him kind of control himself better and be a better contributor for his team. Um, but can they afford to retain him? It's, it's probably doubtful. Um, so it's going to be real interesting to see how they round out their uh, the forward group because that's where there's by far the most questions for sure. And I guess the question mark here is can they repeat as Stanley Cup champions? And I think the answer is absolutely they can. But it'll, the answers to some of these questions are, are going to determine that. But the key part here is they have the core. Their core is fairly young. You know that, you know, they're within the forward group. They've got Landis Cog, they've got McKinnon, they've got Rantanen. You know those are your top three guys, and they're all going to be signed long term. You got McCarr, Taves on the back end, Bo Byram, Samuel Gerard. Like you've got a lot of youth on there, longer term deals as well. They do have some things to sort out, but there's a lot to like about what's already there and it's going to be there for a long time. Uh, Joe Sackick has done a great job uh, and it'd be interesting to see how he rounds out the supporting cast. If you, especially you bring it back Nishushkin and maybe Kumper and then things kind of start to find, go together and then you need to find a few, few value deals there to kind of round things out. But I do wonder as well, one other question might be is will we see Joe Sackick take the, uh, the move from GM to president of Hockey Ops and promote Chris McFarland to general manager? And Chris McFarland is a very well-respected AGM around the NHL. He's had his name mentioned when a lot of other GM opportunities have come up around the league. Um, and I think the Avalanche know if he doesn't get promoted soon that he's uh, likely not going to be sticking around. But they've taken care of him and made him sure he wants to stay. And I do think that that's something that we might see. I mean, you could say Joe Sackick was kind of regarded when he first got into it as somewhat of a reluctant GM. I think he's enjoying it more now. Uh, he's at a masterful job of building this team. They've made good selections. A, a, a lot of their players are all high picks, so they went through some tough times uh, getting you know top uh, 10, top 5 selections between McKinnon, uh, obviously Landis Cog, McCarr, Byram. You know, they've made good on these. They've traded some guys like Matt Duchesne, Ryan O'Reilly, who were top players as well. Um, you know, and they traded them when they were young uh, because they needed to. Like in Duchesne and O'Reilly's cases, they both wanted something different and they both wanted to move on. I mean, I would say Matt Duchesne's probably kicking himself now, saying he wanted to leave Colorado because he wanted to experience playoff hockey. And, well, look at this now. They're a Stanley Cup champion, and they've had lots of playoff hockey, and the team got a lot better after he left, to be honest. So, you know, it's one of those things that the grass isn't always greener on the other side, and you should sometimes be careful what you wish for. I kind of wonder if he has regrets on that. But to me, this team can contend to win. It's just a matter of how they round out the, um, the, the supporting cast. That's a big question for a lot of teams in a very tight salary cap world here. Uh, for the next few years. So let me know your thoughts on the Avalanche. What do you expect from them? Who will be back? Can they contend again? Will they be, be able to have a chance to be back-to-back Stanley Cup champions? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Hello.